After 34 years at Bain Capital, co-chair, you went there uh, as you looked for some cash to subsidize your business school and never looked back. What are you doing now? What are you going to do now that you're going to retire? You're stepping down. That's a great question. It's been, been only a day now, so maybe you can give, maybe you can give <laughs> okay. me some counseling. Uh, no, I think things will remain for the short term pretty much the same because there's a lot of projects to wrap up. Uh, I'll become a senior advisor to the firm, and I'm just so thankful to be with such a great group of partners for so so long a time. I'm I'm uh, overwhelmed by it. Uh, fantastic. I've, I've been working with the same folks for for close to 30, 30, 30, 4, 5 years now. When you look back at more than three decades, is there a deal that you maybe passed up that you kind of regret that you wish you had uh, hooked into? Yeah, you, know, you know, I always believe you, you kind of can't look back. You always look forward. Um, the the uh, uh, maybe I should have bought some Bitcoin. I never I never got into that, but that turned out to be a good thing recently. But that <laughs> well, had, that had a great run. And one thing, uh, Adam Silver, the chair of the uh, NBA, said that he doesn't believe that you ever will retire. That you are not somebody who will ever stop moving or working, and that you send him messages at all times of the night with suggestions. You do own the Boston Celtics. You are interested in the Chelsea football team. Didn't win that bid. Are you looking to push further? into the football arena. Absolutely. We, uh, football is a fantastic sport. You, you know, th there's been a whole sea change in sports in general, which we benefited from, in that it's gone global. And the two global games are basketball and soccer slash football. And as you know, we, we purchased uh, Atalanta up in Bergamo, not, not so far from here in the mountains. And uh, I was fortunate. I was able to go Sunday before I came here to the game, and, and we won 8-2. to two. It's the most goals that Atalanta has ever scored in the history of the franchise. So it's been a really good week. So maybe it was, you know, your presence. I am wondering. I don't think so. I think it's because we have good players and great, great coaches and great managers. But on the, in, in London, are you planning on bidding on any additional teams? You know, I, I'd have to kill myself if I told you that answer. But yeah, we, we are, our group is looking at many teams. Uh, the prices have gone up very high. And, you know, we, 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 we want to buy a great club, but we want to stay disciplined so we can invest in the club over the future. And so my fear is some of these prices are, are now getting so high that, that there might be disinvestment, and I, I want to have a great club, and I want the club to be able to win, and you got to be competitive. So you have to budget putting money in to make it competitive. You're leaving behind private equity, or you're not leaving behind private equity, because you're not actually leaving, because you're going to be an advisor to the firm for the next decade, or potentially more. Uh, but you're transitioning in a real moment of transition for private equity. Do you think that we've already seen the peak for private equity, as perhaps we've seen the end of low rates and that entire era? Uh, on the first question, absolutely not. Uh, private equity is is it only in the first stages right now. Um, you know, I got into it in in the in the late '80s, and it was a cottage industry. It was mainly located in the U.S. Um, didn't even have to travel that much, and there were very few firms doing it. Um, by the way, there I don't think there were even cell phones you know back then. So it was, it was a whole it was a whole new whole new world. Um, but what's happened is, uh, and by the way, the, the the reputation the industry got was they would buy overcosted companies and take costs out. That was in the 70s. Uh, by the time I got there, there was competition, and now there's lots of competition. So the real focus of private equity is to build and grow great companies. People want companies that are going to grow. So, that, so I think we live in a, in a world where people think to the old days when it started. Private equity today has developed huge value-added global services, has taken companies and, and lifted them and transition them into becoming great companies. And that's how you really build and, and, and actually make money for your investors. So what kind of victimhood or carnage do you expect to see from the fact that a lot of people think that we haven't seen the reckoning in private equity prices from what we've seen in public markets, that we haven't seen the reckoning of what the true value is for a company that grew up during 0% rates that now is facing 4 or 5%? Well, that's a great question, Lisa. And I think the reckoning, the good news is the reckoning is going to be more of reckoning on tech companies um, and, and, and let's say, you know, you know, kind of new internet tech companies that people were saying, it, this, this thing, the Amazon model worked. We lost money for 20 years and all of a sudden we made money. Now that's the exception that proves the rule. And, and, and so the companies, the private equity firms that went heavily in that direction paying 30, 40 times revenues, which, you know, was astounding me, uh, uh, that's where you're going to find the reckoning. But the rest of the portfolio is pretty well. The United States has low unemployment, so people are employed, um, people are spending money. So we're not seeing a diminution in those non kind of speculative tech companies. And, and thankfully, Bain Capital, we haven't done very many of those. But do you expect returns to come down because people are more disciplined with their cash and aren't necessarily as willing to go into high-risk moonshot investments? Um, 
Uh, that's a relative question. If you, if you look at private equity returns, uh, uh, most firms are shooting for 18, 20 percent rate of returns. And when, when uh, one of your compadres asked me this question in 1993, saying, I answered this question in 93, 2003, 2013, and now 2023, basically they say, there's too much money in 93, too much money. The, the industry has, has gone 10 times up in money chasing too few deals. You can't maintain those returns. Well, we've maintained those returns now for, for every decade for 40 years. Why is that? It's because the private equity model works. It puts, it puts capital work with experts that really help drive these companies. And certainly Bain Capital, we were built to help companies. We came out of a consulting firm. We didn't come out of a finance firm. We came out of a consulting firm. And we spent 30 years refining that, becoming having expertise in, in vertical markets, medical, technology, uh, financial services. And so we add that value to the companies. Uh, we, we, we invest heavily ourselves in the companies. Our, our, our firm uh, has like 10 percent, a billion dollars in our, in our, a billion two in our $12 billion fund. We invest behind the companies. So that aligned model, a long-term approach, and then value added both on, on, on vertical markets and now functional expertise. We bring in a digital marketing team. We bring in a, a finance team. Uh, has made it a very viable model and you're seeing it taking share from the public markets. So I think we're only in the, still in the early innings and it has another you know, 20 to 50 years to run because it's a great business model. And you can see it being 18 to 20% uh, in that period of time as well. A absolutely, it's consistently done that for, for 40 years now. What about in China? What about some of these other areas that a lot of people are pushing into and seeing a lot of uh, value? Is Bain as well? Well, we, we, we've had a, a, a fantastic uh, Asian presence for a long time now. We're one of the first people into Japan, for example. So we have a Pan-Asia fund. We now have over 50 people, professionals in Japan. I think the largest operation in Japan. And Japan's a fantastic market because uh, they are now embracing capitalism. Uh, I met with the prime minister about a month ago. He's, he's pushing that. They've got to rejuvenate the economy. They believe it, 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 they got to have more free markets and more capitalism. And we've been fortunate because the Japanese really respect the company that's trying to build value and sticks with Japan. So we never went in and out. We, we went to Asia. We stayed there. We built a large presence. They love the value-added approach. So we've done large transactions like Kyokusha was Toshiba Memory, uh, Hitachi Metals, uh, and you're seeing the market open up there. And I, I was just actually on well, a, Okay, just 10 seconds, yeah. 20 seconds. Yeah. Do you think that they're going to drop yield curve control? Do you think that that will be actually beneficial for bringing in investments? You know, things don't happen quickly in Japan normally. Um, and I, my, my, my father ran a company there in 1973. Um, it, you know, and I tell them, you've got to go from a thousand year time frame to a hundred and then maybe we can get to 10. So I'm not optimistic that will happen. And, and they have a heavily indebted economy. Yeah. So interest rates really hurt, hurt the government thing there. So it, it'll be a slow rise, I think.